Welcome to a brief introduction to using OnCommand Performance Manager 1.0. As a starting point, you would typically start with an incident page. You can get to that from the Performance Manager dashboard. If you're integrated with Unified Manager, you can get there from the Unified Manager event list, or you may receive an email notification alerting you to an incident. Any of those, there's a link to more details for that particular incident. So we log in and it takes us directly into the incident page. Once the incident page loads, you get information right from the beginning here, high level summary information. What's the incident name? What cluster is this incident talking about? Um, when was it detected? What state is it in? Is it actively ongoing or is it obsolete? If it's obsolete, what time did it finish? Uh, description of the problem, this particular one is a uh, volume is slow at the data processing node. If you hover over the volume, you see more information, what SVM this volume's on. Then we go straight into component and contention. Behind the scenes, Performance Manager has done the analysis of this problem, and it's realized that one of the components caused greater increase to response time than the other components, based off of what their response time was previously. So it, it's determined that the data processing node is the component that's caused the most increase in latency for this particular volume's workload. And you see that highlighted in the graphic here. And then because that's a component in contention, we start drilling down into that right away. You'll see metrics based off of what different object it is. For data processing, it's utilization history is the metric that we're looking at. And it gives you the node name that we're talking about. So this is the node um, that's in contention. And we see the utilization over time before and after this incident occurred. The incident is highlighted with a pink shading. You see there was a little increase in utilization of this cluster component during the time of this incident. And then below that we get into more details what's going on in that cluster component at this time. This is showing you all the different workloads that are running in that cluster component and how much they're contributing to or impacted by this incident. So right now you'll see it's sorted by default by peak response time impact. Red circles indicate the severity of the impact. And when you hover over the circles, you see some information about response time pain. At, at the peak response time impact during this incident, you see the actual response time for this particular volume that you're hovering over that dynamic threshold for that particular time range, what it was at that time. So in this case, it was 8.31 milliseconds was the threshold. The actual was over 14 milliseconds, so it was flagged as a performance incident. Um, the expected value, the, the typical value is 1, but it can burst up to 8.3 without it being considered an incident. The other column here is utilization. You can see the dark blue line here is showing you the utilization of that component by this particular workload. So the vsim 6 volume, the IOs to that were consuming 3.22% of the data processing software on that particular node. And it shows you the expected value. What it typically would do is a red dotted line. Um, typically, this particular volume does less than 1%. And then in the bright blue shaded area is the expected range. And for this particular volume, for this particular time range, the expected range was between um, less than 1% to 3.36%. So it's using within the same utilization that it normally would. You can also sort this by two different metrics. You can sort it by peak utilization and peak deviation in utilization. Peak utilization shows you which workloads are using the most of this resource during this time range. It'll find the time range that has the highest utilization. And you can see the time range that was selected when you hover over one of these. You can see that it was at 5.06 a.m. vSIM 17 was using 7.93% of the data processing software on that node. So it had the peak utilization 
and it was actually outside of the expected range as well. So this guy may be, it's doing an abnormal amount of activity. You might suspect this one. The reasons why you're seeing this increase in latency on vSIM 06. That's peak utilization. And then peak deviation in utilization is another way of sorting this to show you which one is outside of its normal range the most. And again, vSIM 17, here's what it would normally do as the red dotted line. The expected range that would be considered okay for vSIM 17 is shown as the light blue area. And then what it's actually doing is the dark blue line. So you can see vSIM 17 is using up more of this resource than it normally would. Here's vSIM 06 where it's right on the borderline of what's expected for that guy. In this manner of sorting, you can also see background or internal processes that are consuming that resource. Now, there are several ways you can get to the volume details page. One is through clicking through an incident like this. Another way is that you can come up here into the search bar and type in at least three letters of a volume name, and you'll see the list of volumes that match those characters. You can choose volumes and get to the volume detail page that way as well. Here we are on the volume detail page with the default view. And right off the bat, you see what volume it is, what aggregate it's on. If you hover over these, you get some more information. This volume is on this cluster owned by this SVM. It's online. If we look at the aggregate, you see how much of the aggregate space is used. And you see the warning, overcommitted, and error information as well. You also get information about snapshot copies. This top bar up here is the slider for the time range that we're looking at. So it goes up to 90 days of historical data and we're zoomed in right now on a time slice that highlights when that particular performance incident occurred. You can also adjust it by these buttons up top or you can drag this around. Um, you can also drag and slide the charts and actually move the timeline as well. The different charts that we're looking at, the first one is the volume response time chart. And on the left-hand side here, you see the last polling, this volume was doing 0.75 millisecond per operation on average. That's close to the low for this. The average for the volume is around one millisecond. And the high is basically this peak here at 14.7 milliseconds. You also see information. If you hover over this chart, you get more detailed information. If you go right over the time of the incident, you see what the metrics are. You get information that it was this incident. It's highlighted over on the right side in the event list. And you see the response time, the operations per second, and you can get more details by clicking on the graph that launches back into the information about the incident and then you could click here to go back to the incident page again or you can click on the link in the event list to get to the incident as well so this is the response time by default you also see the cluster components that were contributing to the response time of this volume if it's grayed out then it's not involved in the response time during this time range so if you deselect all of these and select them one by one you can see how much each one of these components is contributing to the overall latency and you see here that data processing is almost everything that is um, taking up time for this particular workload even the disks are not contributing that much latency to this workload right so that that's this view you also get IOPS or operations per second um, breakdown for this particular volume. Right, the gray band in these charts shows the expected range as calculated by the dynamic thresholds or dynamic expected range. So this is the analytics that's coming from the past performance in respect to latency and IOPS. Latency is the primary metric for generating performance incidents. So even though we may go outside of the range here in IOPS, it will not generate an incident unless during that same period, the response time goes out of range. There's also some noise filtering built in so that if either the IOPS were below 10 
during a, a five minute polling interval on average, or the response time was less than five milliseconds on average for any polling interval, then we will not generate a request. So there's a few other conditions where you might see response time peak above what was expected, but we will not generate an incident for that. So, um, and then you also get a breakdown of the events that occurred during the time range selected. Uh, it'll show you events, either performance incidents that have occurred or any change events that performance manager tracks like vol moves. So this is part of the data by default. You can also come up here to break down data by and see more information about this particular volume. So I'm going to select them all and we'll see the different metrics that are available. Same basic charts, but now we also see um, the latency, see which um, either reads or writes that are contributing to the latency for this volume. Then there's um, the operations per second chart again, but we get more details here. Um, we got another chart for reads, writes, and other for what's going on. You can see if it's metadata activity or reads or writes that are causing most of the operations. Then for throughput, we're showing you cache hit ratio. So cache hit ratio meaning is it um, a cache hit anywhere that we consider cache, either um, from SSDs in a flash pool, from flash cache, or from DRAM cache. It all gets lumped together um, into cache hit ratio. For components, we've got the option to see cluster CPU time. So this is the CPU time for all the cluster components that this volume is involved with. And this is in milliseconds. So how much time are these operations for this particular volume spending in the cluster on CPU processing? Also disk operations. We see how many disk operations are happening for this particular volume. And that covers the information that you get from Performance Manager 1.0. Thanks for watching.